So the reason I was using the uh, HD SR04s is they already have all the drive and receive circuitry for the ultrasonic transducers. Uh, the transducers need plus and minus 10 volts in order for them to uh, transmit. And uh, the receive signal is very small in amplitude. You're talking like tens of millivolts. So you need several stages of op amp amplifiers, bandpass filters in order to feed it into a microcontroller. So making all that circuitry would almost turn into a bit of a project in itself. I was trying to bypass all that and do some very quick measurements. I'm just interested in how precise can I get these measurements? Um, are we talking a centimeter accuracy, uh, the five mil, one millimeter? Um, so that, but basically all I'm doing here is I'm setting up uh, an Arduino Nano with a transmitter and then another Arduino Nano with a receiver. And what I actually did was I didn't have any infrared diodes or any radio transmitters. So I linked the two breadboards uh, with just a, an auxiliary cable. And basically when the transmitter sent the ultrasonic ping, it sends a signal down the cable to the receiver saying yeah, the signal was sent just now. And then I can calculate the distance uh, between the sender and receiver. So you might notice the way I actually removed one of the transducers from each of the HCS or 04s and one of them I moved the removed the transmitter to the one I removed the receiver. I'm not really sure why I did this. I thought, I don't know, I thought I had to do it and I, I kind of like taking stuff apart. So anyway, it turns out that removing them stops them from working all together and uh, I copped it eventually and basically just ended up using two new sensors and putting tape over the uh, transmitter on one and the receiver on the other. So this is the first distance test performed, just using the 30 centimeter router and moving the receiver away from the transmitter. It was fairly accurate over the whole range from zero to 30 centimeters. One key thing I noticed was that at whatever distance I was measuring, there was a jitter of around three millimeters to 12 millimeters. And, and I started looking into this and it kind of has changed the whole course of the project from a robot localization type project to well how accurate can you really get these ultrasonic distance sensors and it turns out there's been a, a couple of papers written on this topic and there's some pretty interesting uh, techniques you can use to um, make the distance measurement more accurate so quickly i'm just going to go into what i think the reason behind the jitter is all right so this is the received ultrasonic signal uh, on an oscilloscope here um, you can see yeah, it's got this funny envelope kind of teardrop shape. Um, even though only eight cycles of the 40 kilohertz is supposed to be getting sent, the reason we're getting way more cycles here on the received end is because of the uh, mechanical inertia of the piezo element in the transducers. So what happens is they they got they get the eight cycles, which starts to basically excite them. They start moving and then the eight cycles ends, but they haven't even reached their full kind of resonant amplitude yet. So they'll start, they'll keep increasing in amplitude for a little bit. And then once that's reached, it'll just start slowly uh, decreasing as the energy dissipates. Um, so just looking here, we've got the receive signal again. Um, on the bottom there, you've got the echo pin. The idea being the echo pin goes high as soon as the uh, transmit signal is sent and then the echo pin is meant to go low as soon as the receive signal is sent. So one potential source of jitter here is you can see the way it takes four and a half cycles of the receive signal before it reaches a point where the threshold on the ultrasonic sensor goes okay yeah I've got an ultrasonic signal here and it, it makes the echo pin go low. And this is the problem with having a fixed threshold. Basically the, the threshold is looking at the amplitude of this signal and it's got a, a number and it's saying, okay, if, if it's above this number, I've got an ultrasonic signal. If, if, if it's below that, I don't. But the problem is the time taken to reach this threshold won't always be four and a half cycles. That will depend on the amplitude of the received signal. If I've got the transmitter and receiver right beside each other, that's going to happen faster. If, it, if I put them, you know, three meters apart, it's going to take longer because the received signal um, is lower in amplitude. Now, exactly how, how big that drift will be, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I, I actually think it's going to be pretty small because one cycle here of the 40 kilohertz wave, that's tw that's 25 microsecond uh, period. Um, so 25 microseconds uh, translates to 8.5 millimeters uh, of error. So if, if we're off by one cycle, we're basically off by 8.5 millimeters, you know, almost a centimeter. 
Um, so that's one potential source of uh, jitter. Here we can see uh, the receive signal, and also this is like the signal on the bottom is like the last stage of the amplified uh, signal. Uh, so the amplification on the HCS or 4 you know, it's pretty, uh, you know, cheap and nasty is, what, is how I describe it. It just about does the job for detecting is there a signal there. And the signal on the bottom, uh, that's on the two volt scale. So you're getting a, basically a zero to five volt swing, and that's being fed into a, a microcontroller on the board. And it's uh, just, just looking at that pin. And when it sees the pin drop below a certain voltage, it, it basically it triggers the echo pin to go low. So as soon as it sees the first pulse here, that means, okay, I've got an, an ultrasonic signal and it makes the echo pin go low. But as we can see here, here's what here's what's meant to happen. Um, the first pulse is received, which means the that's basically the first point where the ultrasonic receive signal re reached that threshold. Um, so you can see in this image, it kind of did as it's supposed to. It, it made the echo pin go low on the first pulse. But you can see on this one here, for some reason, it missed the first pulse. Now, you can see the first pulse is kind of like, uh, it's a bit lower in amplitude. It's not fully pulling the pin down uh, as far as the, the subsequent pulses is. So I suspect that like, if the receive signal is just at the threshold, you know, it's going through several stages of off amps, it's not being properly amplified um, until it reaches a point a little bit past the threshold. Um, so you're missing that time of one pulse um so yeah that's going to be a cause of jitter as well so you can see here that delta t is 27 microseconds it's a bit off it's supposed to be like around 25 microseconds is the period of the wave so right there you've got a, an error of 8.5 millimeters caused by that but this is this is just caused by basically the hcs or 04 itself it's using a, a cheap uh very cheap hardware uh, inefficient amplification methods and uh so yeah it's kind of asking for it the problem with using a threshold type approach to detecting the ultrasonic wave is basically you're looking at the receive signal and you've got a certain amount of noise and when the receive signal first starts to appear it's very hard to determine the exact moment that it actually has arrived because it's it's a, basically emerging out of the noise and the point that it emerges out of the noise it's not obvious. It's not like, and you can't narrow it down to the exact uh, point. Um, basically, you're, you're kind of limited. Um, and remember, if you're off by one microsecond, that's 0.34 uh, mil error, millimeter error. And if you're off by like three microseconds, that's around one millimeter of error. So the timing requirements are pretty tight. But I came across this paper, uh, Accurate Estimation of Ultrasonic Time of Flight. Um, basically, their whole thing is so what these guys are basically saying is that the envelope of the signal you know it's not random it's actually uh, you can measure the time constant of this envelope and you can come up with an equation um, basically to say whenever and this is it here all you got to do is you measure the envelope of the receive signal and you you need to you need accurate timing obviously but you just measure when the, the max of the receive signal occurs. And then from there, because you've got the equation of the envelope, you can actually work backwards to figure out when the uh, signal must have arrived at. And using this method, you can actually get a much, much more accurate uh, measurement compared to just uh, threshold detection. So they've actually got some results here in millimeters. So the blue line is the error uh, using the threshold uh, method you can see here it kind of starts at uh, around 5 mil and goes up to around 10 mil or so um, and then for the the maximum envelope detection method we're kind of hovering around between 2 and 4 millimeters you know which is pretty good